Good afternoon and welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Joe Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. And joining me live from the market site is Skip Rashke, one of my good friends from my days at the street. And of course, Joe Burgoyne over at the Options Industry Council. And guys, I think this is the most excited I've ever been <laughs> to You're conduct an interview. It's also probably going to be my biggest challenge in my career, keeping you guys on track. But Good luck. The, yeah. the whole <laughs> purpose of All this right. is to look at from the first days of trading on the Philex right. and how the industry has evolved to all the wow. tools that retail investors have today. And I think it's worth noting that you guys were actually in the pit together. Oh, oh yeah, we sure so were. So let's hear some more stories. Give me one, Skip. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, Joe ran the pit. He was the specialist. And we had, what, four or five stocks? but primarily waste management and MCA was the focus. MCA, Universal Studios, and that sort of thing. Textron. Yeah, so one day, and, and there's nothing that ever happened on the trading floor in any of our stocks that we made markets on that we didn't know about. I mean, w we were the source because it was, you know, our, our you know what, we're on the line if we screwed up. Every morning I would walk past this bookstore and uh, Barnes & Noble, yeah, and I would look in the window to see, because I read a lot, and I'd just see what's being pushed this particular day, week, and it was a Monday, and I walked past, I go, holy, what? And, it, and the title of the book was Ronald Reagan, MCA, right. and, and the Mob. And you can Google it. I mean, it's still out there, I'm sure, for five cents if you want to buy it. And I went, what? Because we're, we're, we're bulled up. I mean, we, we, were, we were looking for some pretty good further movement in MCA, if not eventually a takeover, which it was. And the one thing I would add, this is back in the day when there was only one marketplace, okay? So oh, options were singularly point. listed, but go yeah. ahead. Yeah, no, he's spot on. I mean, this wasn't in any other exchange. This was our exchange, and here come the orders, because what's the first thing everybody's going to do when they see that? Yep. They're going to get slaughtered. Oh, they don't put puts. They're all bulled up, and, they're, and we're going, uh-oh. Yeah, and... We watched the opening, uh, freaking out a little bit because you don't know where the, the openings are going to be. And it didn't open down too hard, maybe, what, a point and a half, something like that. And I'm thinking, that's it? That's the best they got? <laughs> it's kind of like the other day in our, our market right now. That's, you know, when we had that little sell-off, that little burp last week. I, know, I think it was last week. I don't know. This, things happen so fast today. But the same thing. I mean, that's the best they got. and yeah, That's the best the shorts had. And then we looked at each other, and I thought, I better read this book in the next couple of hours while we're trading. So I raced back to Barnes & Noble, bought the book, came in, I'm reading it while we're trading, and thinking, what a business. This is nuts. <laughs> but it's fun. And, and eventually we do. Well, I got and, another MCA story, too. And, and, and MCA, in the end, was bought out by Sony Pictures back in right. the mid-'80s for just right. under eight, 8 bill. You know, a perennial takeover candidate. You oh, know, lots no of volatility, kidding. Jill. And you know options. That's where the fun comes in, that volatility. That's what made it really so much fun back in the day. But that's, that's how we trade, though. We, we traded uh, back then with what's called positive gamma. I, 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 don't, I don't know if it really is the, the de rigueur today of, of traders, but if you were an individual professional and didn't trade with positive gamma. And there were a lot of them. Oh, I, yeah. And we watched a lot of them go out the so door in a heartbeat. Being long vol. Long vol, yeah. Ball. If, you, if yeah. you graph the overall position, delta neutral, uh, keeping it balanced, in other words, you're not long, you're not short, you're just neutral, but you own the gamma. So you're owning kind of like a straddle. Your volatility and PNL plot will look like a U. So if you're getting long as the stock goes up and you're getting short as the stock goes down, exactly. but it's costing you money every day. Right. Okay. As right. opposed to the collectors, the gamma sellers, right. credit spread traders, you know, we were generally on the other side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, but back then, compared to today, and I'll, I'll bring you up to the, where today, I just can't believe what's going on today. Yeah, we only have a day and a half. I, I know, I know. But, I, I mean, back then, we probably paid uh, two to as much as four to five times what you pay today to put those, position, mm -hmm. uh, to those positions on because of volatility. They're so low. I mean, you, this, is, this is actually the delta neutral uh, positive gamma heaven. But nobody's talking about it. And, and I'm looking at that and going, I wish I was 40 years younger because I can see 70 from here. And I was on the floor in, the 30, in my 30s. So uh, I look at that and I go, hello, wake up, things move. I mean, Amazon, you know, CBS. You and, know, and, and I'll move. go back to the point, Jill, that, you know, singularly listed. So we were the supply. 
Right. And and so we couldn't, yeah. you know, r yeah. lean on the other exchanges for liquidity because they, they weren't mega markets. It was only us. We were so. the liquidity. So can you imagine if you had tools, even retail investors have today, yeah. oh. doing what you did back then? Oh, I could do it on the beach. If the cord was long enough to the power source. So, I mean, so much has changed in the marketplace. Guys like us, you know, we had to transition into different situations because, oh, yeah. you know, the efficiency of the market really obviously is driven by, you know, much of the computer side and doesn't oh. need the traders like us to be in the way. The floor brokers, the big ones have sustained, but it, it's really the traders that have disappeared. And that's because of the electronic capacity of the marketplace and yeah. the magnificent efficiency. Right. I mean, you know, the option space, we went from 73 to 2000. We never traded 500 million contracts in a year. You know, we did that in one month back in right. August of 11. Yeah. So, and it's yeah. the efficiency right. of the marketplace now that, you know. But let me ask you in terms of strategy. Yeah. At, 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 regardless of what trade you put on or whether it's 40 years ago or, or, or 2017, do you deviate from the strategy at all because the market structure is different or do you have like a, a set? No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, to this day and to my dying day, I'm a big believer that you, you have to have hedges on. Absolutely. Like all these people that are long right now today. I mean, j just think, what, what was it? Okay, but be specific. What's your strategy well, and how much does it cost? Come well, on, man. Let's put it this way. If I was long sell gene uh, a week ago when I was looking at it in the high 130s, I'm going, this doesn't look good. And, you know, all the stuff I look at. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, well, what are all these longs going to do if this thing barf? And it did, of course, but, you know, it went down once and then it went down twice, kind of like a slinky. Uh, right. That second slinky hit a couple of days ago, it lost like what, 20 points. Holy moly. But not to have, if you're long the stock, and not to have just cheap hedges on right. in, in today's market where the vol is so low and, and the downside is uh, potentially rather huge, uh, it's crazy not to be hedged. And, and that's not, we always played that game hedged we always were hedged. that's why when I when I went when I saw that book and I'm walking past Barnes and Noble and I go ha huh. and then I looked you know my plot when I got in there that morning my overall position because our positions were literally hundreds of contracts over all kinds of uh, strike prices and expiries and so forth but he, even with the crudest form of uh, computerized uh, computerizing of the business from the clearing firm standpoint the broker standpoint we still had decent uh, 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 mental pictures by looking at our overall plot position. In other words, no matter what the positions are, if the stock went down two points or up two points, we knew there down we would be shorter and up would be longer, and we knew how many deltas. Well, delta is stock. De delta is is literally stock. It's just a, a calculus of how you how you uh, formulate it. So if in a situation like that, uh, and the stock dropped, uh, let's say MCA did drop two points on that opening that day, and I was short 2,000 shares at that down to, let's say it, it had closed at 40 the previous day, it opened at 38, and I'm short 2,000, and I'll be short 4,000 at 35, and I'm going, okay, I'll buy a couple of grand, you know, because I've got the gamma. That was the phrase we always use. How much gamma you got? Ah, oh, I could choke a horse on my gamma. Great, okay. You know, the more gamma you got, the, the more you can play the swings. And that's what we really love. We love the swing games. The, the, the difference is uh, I would always love a swing as opposed to a straight up move in a day. Because if you, if you swing, you're able to trade both sides of that gamma. It's as if you're paying for a, a lot of your uh, inventory on your shelf if you're a uh, a store owner. Well, no wonder traders are uh, having a difficult time this year because there's only been one way every day. Yes, and that's one way is the lower left to the upper right, and right. that's what makes it so frustrating. Exactly to right. Trade. Um, so yep. we'll see. You know, we'll see if, if perhaps there's some rhetoric out there now. 2018 might be different, although we said that at the beginning of 2017. But Joe, I, let, let's wrap it up. From this perspective, what's available now across multiple retail trading platforms, and of course through OIC. Look at all the tools that, they, that retail traders have at their disposal. It's exactly right, and Jill. I, I think back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, the bid offer spreads were wider. We were trading in eights and quarters. Right. Yeah. So there was, there was more VIG. Uh, the mm -hmm. markets are far more efficient now, and part of that are because of these wonderful tools, as you say, at OYC, optionseducation.org, all kinds of simulators, vol charts, 
covered call calculators, collar calculators, all kinds of things like that. You know, all the brokerage firms are out there educating the public on options in the markets, and their tools are just really, really helpful, as, long as, as well as the independent third parties, helping you to find the right strike, you know, inside of the vol skew, things like that. Um, yep. They're there, many are free, and it just yeah. it makes point. for better investment. Right. It really does. Have webinars, seminars, shows such as well, this, inviting you know, top industry experts. It's just amazing what's out there. If, if I may, our, 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 uh, you know, we have monthly themes at OIC for the webinars and podcasts. This month's theme, appropriately, options and earnings. Imagine. Oh, you know, you how go. about it? You know? Timing and is everything. Talking about gamma, you know, exactly <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, it's just there, there's so much out there. Investors just need to dedicate a portion of time to gaining confidence uh, through all the tools that are out there, and they're out there. I'll I thought add about one. you last night with us selling calls on Amazon. <laughs> I heard oh. some of that, and I was just like, <laughs> oh. Well, if you're going to do that, buy some on the, above it. You know, backspread. Right, it. right. You're going to short the the uh, the at the money. Buy two of the um, first strike out of the money. The the uh, yeah. The, and Joe's OIC is fabulous. Yeah. Options industry. Oh, uh, we're lucky. You know, 25th year we're celebrating. We just started that in September. As you know, you yep. were kind enough to have right. us here for the bell ringing. Well. Um, 25. You know, and years ago. one real area of growth, I think, too, is in the advisor space. You know, yes. our good friend Eric Cott, yes. you know, in the OIC have launched the Cerulli study talking about, you know, how options are a differentiator, you know, for a lot of these F financial advisors and RIAs. I mean, there's just so much potential growth. Why are we still doing so much volume with no volatility? And in the days that we do get a spike in vol, that's, that's a great question. record days, right? That's a great so question. In September, that one day that we had that spike, it always seems to happen on a Wednesday. That was also the record day in volume as well. So even if you get some vol back in the market, look what's going to happen to options volume. Exactly. I think that's what's so great it, with all the product out there as well. Look at all the, the products that we have at our disposal to trade. Yes. We're, we're possibly right now in, a, in a, the, next, the next phase of all this where we've got sector vol. In other words, uh, it's not contagion right now. It might look like a contagion market, you know, or the, uh, the, 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 even the, the worst boat gets lifted by the, you know, the rising tide. Uh, that's contagion, and it works both ways, up and down. It could be that we've just slipped into this, this sector, uh, uh, market of stocks thing, without even quite realizing it yet, and that's maybe where if you did a volume study, where's all this volume coming from? It could be that it's segmented and, and it's not contagious, but it's segmented in certain sectors, if not certain stocks. And oh, to Jill's point, I mean, yeah. the, those tools yeah. are out there. You hit a button, boom, it's, you know, and, um, and you, you can find that info in a heartbeat. Data mine that stuff. That's, it, you mentioned the options calculator, and I use that every day, and it's on, on the SIBO uh, 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 and, and maybe a few other uh, oh, websites. For, yeah. That's, yeah, OIC, it's gratis. I mean, I used to fight to get on the one computer in my clearing firm, uh, first option in Chicago. I think they eventually were bought up by what Goldman or anyway, it doesn't matter. That, but that, that's who I cleared through, um, and they had one computer <laughs> that did this, and everybody fought over it. So I would get into the office on Saturdays at 6 a.m. And uh, when the janitors were there, I guess, and I was. I know the poor back and, office people having to uh, clean up after expiration, Saturday yeah. morning after expiration. All those oh, paper they trades. They were fun. Yes. Exactly right. They were fun. Talk about fun. how the how the industry. Oh my changed. gosh. We oh. Started in back office somewhere. There's yeah. nothing like being in the business in a bull market because the brokers are spending the money. We had a whole refrigerator, uh, two of them, filled with beer. <laughs> I mean, okay. Well, we'll have to end it on a good note. <laughs> Because it's Friday, so TGI Friday. And, uh, oh, yeah. We're huh? starting happy hour with yeah, you soon. That's good. Thank one. you very much for joining us. Oh, that's great. Today. Hope to have you back. We'll thank you for next. having Joe, us. Always, thank you. And the ah, that's my buddy, buddy. And traders, as always, thank you. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.